Okay, we're on to the blues, I think. Yes. So I need to get that to 40. Uh, I actually need to get green to 35 as well. Ah, uh, we'll wait. We're pretty close to 35. It'll be basically one or two classes and we'll be good to go again. I can't wait to see what Bomb Suki has for us today. <laughs> Girl knows. She can see into our mind's eye. What wings do you have? Do you have dragon wings, Suki? I think I've read stories of dragons that could glamour themselves to look like humans. Or something along those lines, anyway. That sounds kind of familiar to me. But I can't put my finger on why. Um, blue, blue, sleep, blue, blue. I guess I could have done one more blue before the sleep. Eh. If I get two. Well, failure is just about as good as getting a two, except you didn't succeed. But it still added up to 25 stress, so it worked out in the end. Bingo, I'll play. I'll just buy one ticket, though. Didn't win anything, that's okay. Study with mini. I'm leaving the cafeteria after lunch when I encounter... Suki? I haven't seen much of her lately. In fact, I've been trying to avoid her. But she looks upset. Are you alright? You don't think I am, so you're not really asking. Why do people ask questions if they aren't looking for the answers? It's the polite way to let you decide whether you want to talk about it or not. But I could decide that anyway. Yes, but it makes it easier for most people to follow the path of a conversation. Conversations don't have paths. Her certainly don't. Alright. What's the question that I'm really asking? You appear to be upset. Is there anything I can do that would make you feel better? Could you find my brother? Is he a student here? He graduated last year. Then I guess I can't. He's only been my brother for a few years, but we always had birthdays when he was at school. Do you think he's not my brother anymore? How could... no... Better not to ask, the answer would probably confuse me. I don't know him, but if you were close before, I don't think graduating or having a birthday would make that go away. There wasn't a letter, or a card, or a present, or a box. I like the boxes more than the presents. It's fun to cut them open. Anything could be inside. But there wasn't anything. Maybe the mail was eaten by cameras. Maybe... To my surprise, she starts to sniffle. Huge wet tears well up in her eyes and roll down her face. Aw, poor Suki. Hey! Hey! Don't cry, please. Do you think people cry because they want to? No, of course not. Suki seems lost in her own world so often, it's easy to forget that she's a young girl away from her home and her family. Like all of us, she's lonely. In my homeland, we don't give presents to people for their birthdays. Instead, the person whose birthday it is creates a celebration and invites their friends to enjoy your company. If your brother is late in writing to you, you can still choose to give yourself a happy birthday. Who would I invite? Uh, your friends? She does have friends here, doesn't she? There must be people she talks to more than me. There have to be. We've barely spoken. 
Suki pushes her hands into her soft round cheeks, stretching and wobbling her face as she rubs the tears away. Maybe I could call someone. That sounds like a plan. I don't know her well enough to touch her for comfort, so I only clap my hands together and smile at her. <laughs> there you go. You should go and have your lunch before it's too late. That's probably true. Still distracted, but hopefully a little less upset, she goes past me into the cafeteria. I wish there was something more I could do, but I wouldn't have any idea what kind of birthday present would make her happy. And I'm not her brother anyway. I hope she's alright. Hmm. Ever the enigma, Suki. Birthday girl. I found Suki Sato being upset because, as far as I could tell, her older brother hasn't sent her a birthday present yet. I suggest that she could hold her own birthday gathering, but I know that's not the same. Isn't she a freshman? So when would they have gone to school together? Or is she a year older? I kind of assumed she was a fr No, she was a freshman because she was in the freshman elections for president. Huh. I just don't know. Hopefully her brother didn't get expelled. Aw. Would sending Suki a valentine make her feel better? It would show that someone was thinking about her at least. Um, I do need to order one, yes? Yes. Of course I do. Well, let's go for it. We'll see what happens. I don't know if Suki has a friendly ending. I will try. She has a bad ending for sure. So, we shall see. Nice. Someone knocks on my door on Valentine's Day. Hey, Franco, you'd better come out here. What's going on? Hello? I open the door to find Donald and Luke standing in front of... something. It's a brick. Half a brick. It's large and red and rough edge and looks generally nothing like a valentine, except for the card attached to it. Half a... brick? I have no theories about what she could be telling me with that. I pick it up and pull the card out of the envelope. It's a strip of cartoons. Witches hold hands and smile, then dance around in a circle. Black lines appear on the ground inside the circle, and then a tall figure is standing there smiling. The... Noodle Man? It's from Suki, I think. Of course it is. Man, that girl is weird. Uh, is she your girlfriend? No. Oh, that's a relief. Really? Why is it a relief, Luke? Hmm. But, like, who sent someone a brick? Is this a prank? Does it explode? He nudges it with his boot. Nothing happens, so he kicks it harder. If it does explode, why would you kick it? Oh, you deserve that. He tugs at the drawing in my hand so he can get a better look. Is that supposed to be some kind of summoning ritual? <laughs> <laughs> I look down to love. <laughs> I lost it. Luke, stop. You're winning my heart back again. Maybe she wants to summon you to her bedroom for love. Or to make you a zombie. A brick, a ritual, a valentine. What does it mean? I... It's half a brick. 
It's Suki. Does it mean anything at all? Let's go check on Suki. I've got a very bad feeling about this. Is the brick supposed to represent the rock? Is she summoning the noodle man and wants me to bring the brick to dispel the water? That she's summoning, summoning it through? For Valentine's Day? I'm worried. I pick up the brick. It's heavier than it looks, but nothing I can't carry. Still, I wouldn't want to be hit with it. I'm going to Snake Hall to be sure nothing's wrong. Uh, okay. And I think I'd better hurry. I don't know exactly which room is Suki's. I've never asked her. It's not like we're friends. We did come by, but I guess we can't assume that one door we knocked on was hers. But one bedroom door gapes open like an invitation. That's where I need to be. Whoa. If I weren't so worried, I would be shocked by the difference between this snake hall bedroom and my own. Plush chairs, an Iranian-style knotted rug, a canopy bed with silk coverlets. I thought I was getting special treatment. She's a dragon. She hoards beautiful things. None of that matters, though, compared to what I see happening in front of me. Suki and Raven are kneeling on the floor, holding hands. In front of them, a complex ritual pattern has been laid out, lines and circles formed by a lumpy green powder. And in the center of the pattern, flat against the floor, lies a mirror. The reflective surface throws light up against the ceiling. Still waters! From where I stand, I can look down into the mirror and see a dark shape, distant but growing steadily larger. How did you talk Raven into the Suki? He is not the cat-faced monster of my imagination, but he is tall and thin, and has long arms and long, long black hair. Suki sits, chanting, her eyes closed, defenseless. Step by step, the creature beyond the mirror moves closer to the boundary. He snatches out a long-fingered hand. Be gone! Careful not to disturb the pattern, I heft the brick and throw it into the mirror, shattering the surface. I can't believe this is our Valentine's Day. I blast the area with waves of fear, sending Suki and Raven scrambling into the hallway in a mindless panic, as well as driving back any lingering watchers. Nice! Breathing hard, I step back into the hallway and close the door behind me. This is appropriate music for yelling at you two. What were you up to? I can't believe I called what the brick was for. What did you think you were doing? Having a birthday party. By getting yourselves dragged into the other world and eaten? I'm turning into Grabner, aren't I? Oh no, you are. She... She said we were summoning a friendly spirit. And we did! The ritual was for me to come. You could have just asked me without summoning the demon thing from my inner brain? Raven looks at me in confusion. Are you her roommate? She nods. And you didn't see anything dangerous about this plan. I always wanted to summon a spirit, and she sounded like she knew what she was doing. I do know! I had all the wards and bindings. She couldn't touch us if she didn't want to be friends. It's true, that did look like a proper summoning circle. If she did all the rituals correctly, then any being who answered her call would be bound to her terms. Still, considering the nature of the thing she was trying to call to her, that's more risk than I would want to take. But we summoned you instead, and that's nicer. Professor Potsdam doesn't like it when I try to keep pets. I am not a pet. Isn't that what I said? I can only sigh. <sighs> um... 
Doesn't breaking a mirror mean seven years of bad luck? Not if I bury it outside tonight. It's a good thing there's moonlight. Please don't try to summon those creatures again. At least not while you're a freshman. Okay! That's not much protection. But I can't even think of all the things I'd need to get a girl with no sense to agree to in order to prevent disaster. Which is one reason summoning spirits is so dangerous. All the possibilities you haven't thought of. Are you going to tell on us? What does tell on you mean? She wants to know if you're going to tell your friend Hieronymus to give us detention. Hieronymus... Grabener? Your friends? No, it's not like that. He's never been a father before, you know. It's not easy for him. <laughs> oh no! Suki, you're giving Raven all these ideas and I'm falling for Raven again. He's your father? No! <sighs> Nothing bad happened, and you won't try this again, so there's no need to report it. Right? I just want the situation to go away. And now we got a new rumor going around school. I... I guess I should go to class. She escapes. Let's clean up the mess. Right. We need to remove the circles, purify the room, and collect all the glass. I guess I'm going to be late. Happy Valentine's Day! Thank you for the card! Uh, you're welcome. Strange as it seems, this whole affair appears to have cheered her up. I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> this route has been very exciting and interesting. I'm really enjoying it. I was expecting weirdness, but not quite this level. But I'm okay with it, I think. I think I'm more than okay with it. So what was the brick for if not to break the mirror, Suki? Why did you send me a brick? Summoned. Suki and Raven tried to summon an otherworld monster in their dorm room. I disrupted the ritual. For some reason, Suki seems happy about how it all turned out. Because of course she does. Hmm. Well, let's see how this goes. Okay, nearly at 40. Perfect. Okay. Ah! New spell time. Professor Potsdam claps her hands. Look at all these bright, shining faces! So alert, so studious, so filled with potential and energy. Well, not for very long. What? What is she talking to? Sleep. The next thing I know, my face is pressed flat to the surface of my desk. Groggily, I push myself back up. Don't you all look darling? Like little cabbages in a row. Violence is not the only way to stop someone from interfering with your plans. The gentle touch of sleep can remove an obstacle swiftly and without harm. Of course, sleep does not last forever. If it did, we wouldn't have much of a class left. Causes a living target to fall asleep for four turns unless disturbed. I wonder if I can use that in the final exam. Speaking of exams. Here we go! Frog time. I find myself staring at the bulbous eyes of an unfamiliar creature which is standing back out of reach. There are no stairs out of this dungeon. 
The Riparian's goal is to find and claim the silver chalice hidden somewhere in the labyrinth. Your goal is to get there first. Seize the chalice and you pass the test. As the words fade away, I hear a series of echoing crooks, but I can't make any sense out of them. Okay, first things first. Um... Oops. Rug. And spellbook. What do we have? Ground spell. Sleep. I can always put him to sleep if all else fails. All right. Did you really just psych me out, Mr. Frog? Can't believe. So rude. You and me can stick together. Ugh. You psyched me out again. Oh! I get through there. <laughs> I could poison it, I guess. I can teleport myself to the other side. Can I use sleep on you while you're there? Nice. Two can play at this game. Unfortunately, I don't know which way it is. I have no magic left. I'm gonna make a new frog. Did I guess, I guess correctly. Get hecked, frog. <laughs> Did it. When I can feel my feet again, I am standing in the school quad and I have to shield my eyes against the sunlight. Congratulations, Franco! For succeeding in your quest, you received five merits. I hope you enjoyed putting your skills into practice. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have another student to look after. Looks like I'm finished for the day. Man, what a great spell sleep is. I like that a lot. Um, we are going to study with Minnie. Should we read about anything? Nope. Okay. We only have one more combo spell to learn in green, and then we're done. Sleep for sure. I need to get green to 55 and black to 50. So I guess we'll just go back and forth. Should be able to accomplish this. Oh. No! Oh, my little wanderers, how do you choose what actions to take from one moment to the next? With the mind and 
spirit, yes? Your thoughts and dis your decisions? But how do you receive the knowledge you use to make those decisions? How do you experience the world? Be sensible. It is the senses of your body which take in your surroundings outside and create your world inside. When your senses are shifted out of phase, your world is altered and your decisions no longer make sense. Interesting. The spell combines blue and green magic to disarray the target's senses, throwing them into confusion. Oh, this is the combo blue and green spell. So what was the other spell I learned? It was a mixture of something else, I guess, that I haven't learned before. Under the influence of this spell, a creature might walk into a wall, attack their own feet, or simply fall over. The effects are unpredictable. Some find the experience intriguing. However, experimenting with your own perception should only be done with a fully qualified witch to act as your sitter. If you use this spell on hostile beings, they are still likely to attack, even if their choice of targets may be random. If there are many possible targets nearby, it is more likely that they will attack something other than you. Therefore, if you are pursued by a group of angry shareholders, you might disrupt the whole pack by scrambling only one. Pardon? Shareholders? What is she talking about? It's probably better not to ask. <laughs> Scramble senses. Interesting. Awesome, what have you been up to with your, your druggy smell? Uh, that's too funny. I will volunteer. And I will study with many. Um, yeah, let's go on vacation. To, you pick, Dad. He didn't talk about Suki. That's interesting. Ugh, I meant to check my spell book. Bad me. I forgot. Ooh, pancake time. Gotta give our girl some pancakes. Green and black, right? Yeah. Let's see if we can get through the entire week without sleep. Probably a mistake, but we'll try. Pancake time. Ah! Suki brings me a stack of pancakes with a perfect syrup spiral on them. Not a mystical sigil, as far as I know, just a spiral. She smiles as she sets them down, but doesn't say anything. Luke at my side nudges me with an elbow. What do you want, you troublemaker? <laughs> Why is this the couple that you're the most interested in, Luke? I love Luke. Franco and Suki sitting in a tree. Why would we sit in a tree? K I S S I N G? I take a second to put the English word together. I am not kissing her. Kooky Suki, Kooky Suki. I roll my eyes. Whatever you say, Lukey. <laughs> Dang, got him. Roasted him. She's being friendly because she's nice. Probably too nice. Especially when it comes to trusting other world entities. I'm going to give her a pancake. <laughs> so take that, Lukey. <laughs> I head to the stage and pick up a plate of pancakes. I can't think of anything fancy to do with the syrup, but I think she likes sweet things, so I make sure there's enough of it. Then I deliver the plate to Suki and go back to my seat, feeling proud. Luke gives me another funny look, but he doesn't say anything. After that, I can settle down to enjoying the Vermont maple. 
Yeah, that's right. I got her pancakes. What? Well, what of it? Luke? What are you gonna do? Probably just be sad that we're not interested in you. <sighs> Bevel play bingo. Oh, we won! We won money! What am I gonna do with all that wealth? Do I need anything else? I could buy a wand. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's get some wands up in here. Let's get a fancy wand. Feeling fancy today. Look at us! Pretty neat! Uh, done? No. Diary. Definitely gotta read Diary. Maple Ceremony. We had a pancake supper to celebrate the maple harvest and encourage social interaction. For some reason, I decide not to write about Luke teasing me about Suki and feeling proud about sharing pancakes with her. Cause that's just how I roll. 